I'd say here on, on theCUBE, and this is our three days of exclusive SiliconANGLE Wikibon coverage of EMC World, where you know, we're starting to see it from the noise, and we're proud to be, um, be here, thanks to EMC for allowing us to come here for the fourth year. theCUBE was born at EMC World in 2010, when we first started this journey, Dave, and, and I got to say, watching Jeremy Burton kind of come into his own, there's a reason why he's the highest paid um, CMO, is now president of the products group, and as well as the marketing guy, head marketing guy, because he's got chops. He told us uh, four years ago what he was going to do at EMC. He's done everything and more. He gets bigger and better, great on messaging, they are on point, they have the marketing down, they understand the issues, they are hanging it all together beautifully. Uh, this is theCUBE, I'm John Furrier with my co-host Dave Vellante for day one wrap up. Dave, um, you got to be impressed with EMC. One, we just did a full day of CUBE coverage of which we had um, a CUBE guest, uh, Andy Brown, who I interviewed from USB, also on stage with Jerry Burton, and we, we pulled no punches. We talked about NetApp, we talked about the competition, he talked about service mesh, and clearly, EMC is not afraid to go big and go bold. Well, I love that that EMC, first of all, you're right. Uh, I mean, Jeremy Burton's holding a clinic. <laughs> you know, it's really amazing what he's accomplished in the last couple of years in terms of growing this event. But what I liked about the demo was he had a customer, Cube alum, as you pointed out, customer CTO of UBS doing the demo. Now, you know, it's sort of, you can squint through it and say, all right, well, the demo is, you know, meh, 2013 function, you know, not that great What's today. What's Amazon like? But, yeah, but, but you know, automated provisioning or, or simplified provisioning of a VMAX, eh, that's nice. But the really exciting stuff I think is coming next year, but the veneer that they put on top of it with the customer doing the demo, I thought was brilliant. So, it was very good. And they, you know, of course, Jer classic Jeremy, right? A lot of sort of hokey marketing, the superheroes and all that stuff, but it's funny, it's fun. You know, people liked it. And it was good, it just mixed it up a little bit. So, this show, 16,000 people here, John. I mean, this is a massive show. When we first did EMC World, I think it was eight, 9,000. So, you know, it's rocketing. Well, I got to say, you know, one thing, we had a great day in the Cube here. So there's two things that, that, are, that stand out to me in the, in the opening keynote session with David Goulden was, and Jeremy Burton was one. Obviously, Jeremy Burton did a fantastic job and props to Jeremy. He's going to be on the Cube. We're going to ask him for all the details and, and you know, he settles down a bit. Hopefully, he won't be too burnt out. But David Goulden kind of coming into his own and clearly, he is not afraid to get a little bit geeky, be, show, be kind of a showman. That's kind of not in his DNA. He's classic, you know, operator and, you know, obviously, to me, he's heir apparent to Joe Tucci at this point. I did see Joe Tucci, Pat Gelsinger on the way in, walked in with them, said hello to Joe and Pat, and um, clearly the swagger's there. But David Goulden's coming into his own. He's commanding presence up on stage, really saying things like, we're going to win with Flash, introducing security as a big data problem, security meets big data. You're hearing things around hybrid uh, use cases for Flash and, and uh, spinning disk, obviously a little bit little different cost point, different use cases, kind of a mixed use, and obviously all flash, they're all in on a flash. Now, whether that materialized, Dave, we're going to have to drill down on that, but really, ultimately, is that we had two interviews today on theCUBE on day one. We had the uh, general manager of the flash group on, as well as Andy Brown, both up on stage, and we nailed it, Dave, I got to say. We, we, yeah, we were not pre-briefed on these announcements, but again, we're right, on the, we're right on the pulse here. It's about flash, it's about changing software programmability, it's about the development and what EMC is showing here is that they're going to roll out the Amazon-like functionality for the enterprise. It's very, very clear to me from this keynote and our conversations this morning is that they want to be the private cloud and use the hybrid cloud positioning to offer their clients Amazon-like functionality. And the question is, can they get there? And Dave, I'd like to get your take on what you think. Can they get there? Is it, I mean, you mentioned the functionality, yeah, it's okay, but, but they are showing a, a sign of the direction. Well, I think, you know, John, as you said, you know, many years ago to me, if you want to know what's going to happen in the enterprise IT, look at what's happening today at Google and Amazon and Facebook. I wrote a piece in, John, in 2006. I just pulled it up on the wiki. It's called Service-Oriented Service Storage, an idea whose time has come. And the basic premise was that you've essentially got to do what EMC just announced today. S separating the functionality out so that it can be reusable, the controller functionality. So I think that EMC's laid that out in a vision, and they've said, hey, this is the future 
of how we're going to attack the storage market. And I think as David Floyer and I were talking about at uh, our earlier segment, Breaking Down Viper, there's not going to be a lot of room for storage platforms. You know, a web services, services oriented architecture, which is essentially what this is, uh, separating the data plane from the control plane and all that sort of geeky stuff, but it's really about <clears throat> allowing entries and exits into the platform so that people can better integrate, you know, uh, uh, and essentially speed deployment, speed function, and actually build an ecosystem around this platform. There's not going to be a ton of room for, the, for, for winners here. It's going to be one or two guys that go out first and, and get this platform established. Obviously Amazon is one of them, EMC's trying to be one. I would expect IBM to be in there. You know, let's see what HP does. Um, and, and maybe Oracle and, and, and maybe Dell, but uh, that is really EMC laying down the gauntlet saying we're going to totally disrupt our own business, transform our own business. But having said that, they're being very careful. They're aiming this at the cloud service provider marketplace. So this is how EMC intends to compete in the cloud. Is it open? Depends on your definition of open. I would say in a scale attended. Well, they use one. commodity hardware. They talk about commodity hardware as well as their own proprietary stuff. So they're saying choice is a function of how you want to roll out stuff. And yeah. by separating the control plane and the data plane, which we had expected them to do, they announced that you know, control services and the data services as separate, separate components. Um, they are messaging, so I think open to them is just choice on vendors to choose from. They did weave in OpenStack, I noticed that, slight messaging, um, but in general, great messaging. And, and again, another highlight that I thought, you know, public cloud orchestration, they brought this simplicity, simplicity uh, app, which kind of was a, was a direct strike at Dropbox and Box.net. Guys, you're now put on notice, in my opinion, as far as I'm concerned. I'm sure EMC and other vendors like Symantec and McAfee will be coming out with similar type services. But what the notable quote that I had on this keynote was, uh, David Goulden said the following, Dave, you can get Google-like data center without hiring the thousand PhDs to do that. What they are basically saying is, we can give you Google-like cloud. You know, they have a lot of experience selling into Facebook, YouTube, all these hyperscale environments, web hyperscale, and what they're saying is, we want to be that bridge in that journey. So finally, EMC is getting down to nuts and bolts, Dave, onto this journey to the private cloud, and it's clearly, they want their customers to cross the bridge with EMC. It's an EMC only play. They're throwing in great messaging around multi-vendor and openness. Uh, I'm not sure you're open, and again, the Google uh, uh, quote was good. And then the fact, developer angle, they're saying programmability. That's a key message, and they were on point. I mean, if you're going to be software-defined uh, data center, you have to talk about developers. Listen, here's the thing though, in this business, if you want to make money, you got to have some form of lock-in, right? It's, or you know, call it stickiness, but, you know, Amazon's got lock-in, right? The question is how much? Is it, is it Microsoft level? We were talking about this the other night. Is it Microsoft level lock-in, or is it, you know, Dell and Compaq level lock-in. I, th I happen to think it's more Microsoft level. I think that what EMC has announced is something that is a, a vision, a great vision, but you know, on an openness standpoint, I would say yes, it's good on choice, but as far as openness, I mean, it is EMC's way to really own you know, the future of storage. It's trying to get Cisco-like market share in the storage market. I mean, I've been watching EMC for a long time. What do they have, 30, 35% of the storage market? I guarantee they're sitting around saying, how do we get 60, 70% <laughs> of the storage market? And this is how they intend to do it. So, you know, it's, it's great marketing. We hear a lot about no lock-in, no lock-in. In order to make money in this business, there's got to be some degree of lock-in, whether it's customer loyalty, you know, whether it's some kind of proprietary lock-in, which is the old days. You know, IBM calls itself a reformed alcoholic. This is sort of the new form of, of stickiness. It's, it's a lock-in, John. Yeah, so Dave, obviously we heard this key message again from the, this is from the first keynote. And by the way, they left out the whole data, data big data. So, the, you know, Gelsinger, Moritz, and Tucci, they're going to address that tomorrow. Right. We'll be, on, we'll be all over that. But Gould is kind of walking everyone down memory lane. The cloud era, virtualization. Okay, check the box. Okay, great. Phase two is the compute storage networking, abstracting the intelligence, some of the intelligence, he said, quote, abstracting some of the intelligence into a virtualization layer. That is the software-defined data center. That was a key quote. And then the other thing that they mentioned, David, and this is where I want to get your opinion, if you can chime in. He said, EMC has spent the last two years developing this software-defined architecture. What's your take on that? You've had visibility into EMC. Has it been two years? Are they cobbling this together? Has it been more than two years? What's your take? Well, I think they've been thinking about it for a couple of years. I think they got serious about 
banging out code, uh, I would say they got really serious last summer. Uh, in fact, I went back and watched the VMworld 2012 interview that we had with Chad Sakic, and he essentially laid this out. You know, Chad is always good. You always read Chad's blogs if you want to know what EMC's up to. So I would say that that's when they really started to solidify this. I think it was more conceptual you know, two years ago. But so, and I think that what we're going to see in 2013 is very limited function. I, mean, I think what they showed up in the demo of provisioning, uh, uh, simplifying the provisioning of a VMAX, eh, that's nice. And now when they start to bring in some of the other interfaces, uh, they mentioned a native F S HDFS interface, they mentioned uh, a native S3, object-oriented interfaces. That's to me where it really starts to get interesting. They're talking about eventual consistency. That's an Amazon term, you know, at least you know, one that Amazon uses a lot. Uh, I, I like that concept, and I think more and more applications are going to lend themselves to that. I think they have been working on this you know, for you know, hard in terms of coding for a year, but I still think they got a long ways to go. So let me ask you about the flash. So they obviously, Goulden talked about flash. Um, flash only use cases, obviously targeting Fusion I.O. And two hybrid mixed use, he weaved an email, basically saying email, yeah, keep buying our symmetric drives for email. Oh, by the way, we'll throw some flash array um, components in there to give you kind of in memory, you know, 24 hours. That's good optimization, serving up what he said, 80% of the IOPS or whatever, whatever the stat was uh, in terms of traffic. So flash, what's your take on the flash announcement? The flash component of the keynote. Well, I think what struck me in watching that keynote is, and I was talking to David Floyer about this, I was sitting next to him. We had a conversation about, you know, this whole tiering concept, where you go from, you know, fast to slower, to a little bit of slower, a little bit more slower. Eventually that's going to go away. You're going to have flash managing all active IOs, and you're going to have a bit bucket, and you're going to have a one-way trip to that bit, bit bucket. Uh, and this notion of tiering, I think, is just going to fuse into a, a file system control, the server level controlled, architecture, which allows you to put a lot more data into Flash, the entire database, merging transactional and, and, and operational databases, and building business processes around that in a much more flexible way. I think really today, applications and the way they're designed are very limited, and they limit business processes, and I think we're going to see a change, John, over the next 10 years as to how organizations approach systems design, and I think it's going to have a major impact on database design, and then ultimately business process. Other key notable points here, obviously security meets big data, that's got a big theme, obviously analytics. Um, another comment was, leave your data where it is. So that's some rationale to the separation of the control plane, and uh, just overall a great day, Dave, so kick off day one. We're going to try to stay with the, with the, with the fatigue, uh, again, usually we, day one's usually we punch it at that pretty easily here in the cube. Um, the cube again here exclusive coverage for three days of nonstop coverage. We got Pat Gelsinger tomorrow, just going through the list here, um, and we got Paul Moritz coming on on Wednesday, and uh, David Goulden coming on on Wednesday at two o'clock. Jeremy Burton coming on Wednesday. Wednesday's the big money day for the execs. Jeremy Burton. Uh, David Goulden and Paul Moritz. Tomorrow we got Pat Gelsinger at 11.40, and we're going to see about Pat. He sits down with us this year and spends more time with us. That's a good sign. We want to ask him a lot of pointed questions. And of course, interact with us on Twitter. At SiliconANGLE, at Wikibon is our uh, Twitter handles. I'm at Furrier, F-U-R-R-I-E-R, -R -E and uh, Dave is at, at D-Vellante, D-V-E-L-L-A-N-T-E. -E. And uh, this is theCUBE. Uh, any final comments, Dave, before we wrap up day one? Well, I think in classic EMC fashion, you had a big day one, a lot of fun. Um, you had a lot of vision laid down. EMC's always looking at what's happening out there and, and, and they're going after somebody. I think that in many respects, John, this is a way to neutralize the effects of OpenStack. And, and to your point last week, when I was at the AWS Summit, we talked and you said, you know, Dave, I'm starting to think that OpenStack is as much a threat to VMware as it, as it is to AWS, and I think you're right on, and I think EMC has seen that for a while, and, and this software-led infrastructure, this software-defined storage, is all about their play in the cloud, relative to OpenStack, certainly relative to AWS, and I think we're going we're gonna to unpack it tomorrow. We got a lot of the engineers coming on from software-defined storage, we got the head of the division, uh, we got the big wigs coming on, and I'm just excited to be here. Uh, this is theCUBE, today day one wrap up. We had great guests, we had the lead of their Flash division who's going to be a keynote, so if you want to go watch that video and get a tease out of, of we had a real, real candid conversation, I think you're going to find out a lot more tomorrow, but we, got, we had a great conversation. 
we had um, also Andy Brown from U, yeah, U, UBS on, Big Bank, and, and he talked about, Dave, uh, uh, that since the financial crisis of 2008, how they operate their business is completely different. Compliance. We had, probably in my opinion, one of the, the most successful companies that really hasn't broken out on the main, main press yet in Service Mesh. Service Mesh is a company that I guarantee you will get bought by EMC. Those guys have a real compelling product. They're doing a lot of that stuff around compliance. These guys made a big bet on web services, uh, service-oriented architectures, Service Mesh. We had the CEO on today talking about how they built their business, bootstrapped it up, took some financing because they could grow um, through Frank Cartelli Ignition Partners. Great company. Those guys are doing things that are really, really hard. A lot of great guests. We had a spotlight with Brocade. Again, Brocade, another surprise, okay? Really amazing enterprise fabric. They got Ethernet fabric, they got the sand fabric with Fiber Channel, and Fiber Channel's turning out to be a big player. So again, day one is in the books. Come back tomorrow, exclusive coverage, wall to wall. Go to siliconangle.com for exclusive coverage. Go to wikibon.org for free research. And, and our content is there for free. Engage with us on, on the social channels. We love bringing theCUBE to you. I'm John Furrier for Dave Vellante. This is a wrap up for day one. Thanks for watching and come back tomorrow and Wednesday here exclusive coverage at EMC World. This is theCUBE.